What's up watch people how you doing today everybody welcome to another episode of the rich buddy live show <laughs> yeah yeah we're talking watches today we're gonna look at some handguns and we're gonna look at some Bitcoin that's right that's right as you can see before your eyes I'm turning into a Bitcoin myself I'm losing control and I'm literally turning into a, a node. I'm turning into a node, a Bitcoin node. And pretty soon, I don't know what's gonna happen to me. All right, how y'all doing, man? It's five o'clock. Well, as you just heard my computer say, it's five o'clock. And uh, we're gonna look at some watches. So my topic for this morning is watches that I've been considering. What watches am I really making a move on? And uh, has anything changed? What am I considering? What's really coming? What's going on? That's the deal here. Am I coming in? Yeah, I'm coming in. Maybe I should turn my mic up just a little bit. There we go. Then you guys can adjust it on your end however you want. That might be a little better now that I'm facing the mic. So, um... So what watches are we considering? What watches are coming in for sure? What's changed? What hasn't changed? Have my thoughts and feelings and desires changed on these things? So let's see. I think I'm going to put a list up of what I know I've been contemplating. So we've got the Rolex OP41 yellow dial. That's one of the watches we know about, right? We know about the Omega. Uh, what do they call the Omega? The Omega Silver Snoopy. The Omega Silver Snoopy. 2020. We got the... Uh, AP Royal Oak 15500. We got the uh, Paddock 51671A. We got the uh, FP Jorn Havana Sovereign. We got the FP. Jorn Chronometra Blue. Fuck, we ballin'. We be ballin'. FP Jorn Chronometra Blue. Damn, we got anything else on the table, folks? Um. Oh, damn near, I think I got everything. I'm not. Wait list, wait list. Okay, let me put that list up. Hold on a second here. What what do I call these? These are a little bit more than my watch considerations. These are my current watch orders, right? That's what that's what these really are, man. These are my current watch orders. So let's throw that up there. 
That way, if anybody's joining, uh, the hell, they know what we're talking about. Discussing my current watch orders. Save. There we go. So those are my current watch orders. So let's see. The Rolex OP41. Okay, that's not paid for. That is... Uh, that's supposed to be coming in in January. So I've been assured over and over again I'm getting that watch. I didn't have to really ask for it too hard. I, I really think I'm going to love that watch. I've been anticipating that watch's arrival. I really do want that Rolex Yellow Dial OP. I think it's going to brighten up the collection. It's a loud watch. It's uh, not so loud in the sense that it's obnoxious like a, a gaudy gold hublot or something, right? It's it's subtle. It's just it just God, I love it. Yellow dial, that's going to be great. Let's take a look at that real quick. We ain't talked watches much, so we might as well even just pull them up and look at them, right? Even though we know what they are. Let's talk some watches. So. You know what? We'll pull up a uh, Hodinkee article that just came up on my screen here since it did. So let's pull the fireside away for a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this morning. If you like the content, please give me a thumbs up. Like and share and subscribe. We generally talk about three things on this channel. Primarily two. Luxury watches and money and uh, mostly luxury watches it all depends on if we're going through a current bull run or not Bitcoin money watches and uh, on rare occasion we'll do handguns which we're gonna do a little bit today so uh, Hodinkee here Hodinkee's a a great little outfit that sold out and uh, we'll continue using some of their articles here to look up some stuff. The Rolex 41. Let's see what they got here. I mean, I'm excited that Rolex replaced the 39 millimeter with the 41. I've never tried a 39 millimeter OP, so I don't know what I'm missing out on. Apparently, a lot of people are um, got a little bit upset when the 39 got discontinued. They felt it was perfect for that watch. Apparently Rolex thought otherwise. I think what they're trying to do is bring in a whole new market of uh, buyers by going up to 41, such as myself. I... Uh, I don't know if I would have considered the watch at 39 millimeter as opposed to it being now the new 41 millimeter. We definitely know the, we definitely know that the, the the new Stella dials is what initially drew me as well as everybody else in. But the fact that I know it's a 41, and they really double down on the size at the same time without even me ever looking at these watches and buying it I can say that that just kind of put the nail in the coffin right there yellow dial bam slam the 41 millimeter nail in and and, it, and it's kind of like hey you know what that, that sounds pretty cool nice big Stella no date watch right I'm 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 gonna have this is this is what's cool about this watch you got to understand too is that after a while you start to get a little peeved at the date window it's never set properly 
um, you hate winding through the damn gears to get to the proper date when you really don't care about the date anyway. And when you're setting it, you're not even sure what the dang date is. You have to pull out your iPhone and look at what the date is for the day. So I'm kind of past, I'm over the date window thing, you know? Um, and you know, Rolex pretty much, dang near every Rolex has a date window now, right? Don't, don't it? Um, it's hard to get away from a date window on a Rolex, um, you know, unless you're going to go chronograph on a Daytona. So that's my only, that's my only watch that doesn't have a date is the, is the Daytona. Oh, and the 1016, which is one of the reasons why I love the, the new 1016, right? That I've had now for about a year now. I love that watch because it doesn't have the date. So it's definitely a to-go-to -to watch, right? Um, here we go. This one right here. Wow. When I get this, this, this guy here, um, I can tell you I'm going to be wearing it a lot. Let's see if they have a yellow one up here showing. They don't exactly. Um, I'm going to be wearing it a lot. I'm going to be wearing it a heck of a lot. I want to say the 1016 and this watch will probably be my most two worn watches for the time being. So we got the 3230 movement in it, 70 hour power reserve. You know, I'm going to be spiffy with a new with a new movement, increased power reserve. Man, a 70 hour power reserve, that's gonna feel great, especially when I plan on actually using this watch and rotating it in an immediate sequence and a, and a frequent sequence. You know, meaning that, meaning that it's gonna probably always be in the rotation. There'll be other watches that go in and out of the daily rotation, but this watch, along with the 1016, because they don't have dates on them are going to be, trust me, they're going to be in a daily rotisserie, man. All right. Um, automatic. Gaffer Hertz. 31 Joules. Hacking seconds. Hacking seconds. Hey, man. You know, you got Cosk certification, Rolex certification, hacking seconds, baby. How many times do you hear people cry about the non-hacking seconds on Paddock? Whoa, Rolex isn't a high horology brand. Well, at least it's got hacking seconds, baby. Right? Hey, um, do you know what superlative means? When they say superlative chronometer certified, not just chronometer certified. There's a meaning behind the superlative. Does anybody know what that means? Before I tell you, anyone, anyone, anyone? Oh, I got the live, uh, sorry, I got the member only chat on, so that leaves a lot of people out from chatting. You know what? Um, it's called a superlat superlative because it's tested twice once sealed and once after it's been sealed the case back that's why rolex calls it superlative
that's a that's a magnificent watch now that we're talking about it let's see what else Hodinky says about it while the splashiest Rolex related headline of the day is the announcement of the new 41 sub that's not the only new watch we're getting from the crown on this warm summer evening it's not even the only new 41 millimeter watch as it turns out the OP, which is the entry point into Rolex's collection, is now available in a 41mm case size, replacing the 39mm, joining the 36, 34, 31, and 28 options. The 39mm, in fact, wasn't added that long ago, in 2015. Interesting, I didn't know that. And became something of a cult watch in its relatively short lifespan. Well, there you go. You know? The 39 is a low production booger. Who knows if that will uh, I mean they'll be collectible or sought after one day. Probably not. I mean it's just an OP and there's just look how many of these things they're making. 41s, 39s, 36s, 34. I mean fuck me dead. It's almost like Omega's limited editions aren't they? But at least maybe it will tend to hold value of that watch more so than other in its uh, category. That could be one of the pluses for having the 39 or buying the 39. Um, I think there's some, uh, some uh, staying power with an OP41, these new ones with these Stella dials. You know, one day if they stop making them, I mean, at least these have the colors uh, to back them up. Anyway, we're buying this for the love of the watch, obviously, because like Houdinki says, this is um, the entry level, entry point into Rolex collection. And this is literally probably one of my last Rolexes, at least for now. So I'm buying their entry point watch as one of my last Rolexes, actually. I mean, because from here on, what, what, what do I got left to look at in Rolex, to be quite honest, going forward? Sure, if they call me for a Pepsi, I'll take it. If they call me for a Panda, I'll take it. If they call me for a Sky Dweller, I guess I'll take it. I'm, I'm not so keen on the Sky Dweller. Maybe I'll like it after I get it. Um, I mean, I kind of got all the Rolex that I want, so that's why I'm kind of finishing off. I'm sort of finishing off the Rolex category with an OP41, baby. You know? That's kind of what I'm doing. That's going to round off the collection nicely for my Rolex. I'll have eight Rolex. Nice. Round number. And a little bit of everything. Vintage. Yeah. Even one of the newest pieces being this OP41. So I'm really, really really excited to get this this watch more more so than any watches I've gotten as of late uh, any of these dial color variations are are great to me it seems most people match them to their automobile as did I, yellow, for the 911. And um, someone we were chatting with, I don't recall where, somewhere, told me that they picked up the red coral one to match their red sports car. I thought that was cool. You know, uh, to be honest, it, it, I, I'm thinking to myself, the yellow one would match a red sports car better than the red one. 
because the red would be a little too much red. But imagine the yellow against a red sports car with a, with a car that has all red inside and you're contrasting with the yellow OP dial. Wouldn't that be hot? Likewise, with my yellow Porsche and all my yellow stitching and, and everything, it would kind of be neat to contrast with a red coral OP. Um, I've told you guys before, the red coral OP is going to be on my bucket list. It, it's on my bucket list as well. So I've already decided that if I get this yellow OP41 and I fall in love with it, I'm going to immediately hit him up for the red coral. Uh, well, I don't have to immediately. Let's just say, let's leave it down the road, you know, down the road, a year or two or three down the road. We'll just, we'll pick up the red coral OP41, right? So uh, I know I want both of them. I'm pretty sure I want two of those watches. Um, the, the green I'm not fond of. Let me show you why. Well, we're going to talk a lot of watches this morning. I didn't expect to uh, get this excited about a freaking Rolex. Oh my goodness, look at this. I just want to make love right now. Man, too bad my wife's asleep. She'd get some benefits. Okay. Look at that. Okay, so going back to the green dial, I want that real quirky green is what I wanted. And uh, let me see if I could pull that up on, a, on another screen. I really wanted that quirky green. So let me pull up a Rolex green a Stella, a real Stella. Maybe a 18039. Let me see if I can find something like that. 1803 or something. Let's see here. Okay, this is what I wanted, ladies and gentlemen, in in the in the green. Hold on, it's not a high def. There it is. Let me show you. Okay, so see this green here they have here? This is this is what I wanted to see. Right there. That's what we wanted to see in the green. You see? You see? Or this? Um, this? Uh, a little brighter? A little more... Uh, boy, yeah, like, you know. That That's what we wanted, right? Really right there. I, I feel you can see if they went with this exact green right here how this would match the red coral and the yellow they did. The same, it, 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 ha it would have the same, uh, the same, uh, I don't know what you'd call it. I'm not an art person in the sense of knowing all the technical terms. But the colors have the same look. Well, well, I don't know if it's called a pastel. It's not a, really a pastel look, is it? Whatever this look is, the red. This is the same look as the red coral and the yellow they came out with. The green, they just went with a hard green. So, I'd want all three of them without a doubt. If they had came out with a color like this, I would have jumped on all three of them. like this even the lime the lime would have been great even even this tone darker off more off this would have even been perfect do you see the difference yeah i love i love that gosh you know if they if they made the green one like this that would have been my first pick, regardless of the color of my car or anything. I would have picked the green one first. See, like this. 
Very quirky. Okay, so let's see what else. So I'm a, definitely sounds like a, uh, I'm a hundred percent for sure on that OP41. And I would, I would, without even having it, I would recommend that to somebody who's new into watches. I'll certainly love to dis uh, love to go over it in full once I get it. But I can just know that would be a good watch for someone who's just getting into a luxury watch. That that should be a good first watch because it's coming in. Uh, not this one on the screen, obviously, but because it's coming in at. Um, uh, what do you call it? At 5,900 MSRP. And that's a great way to start your relationship first time with an AD. So make sure you pick the right authorized dealer that you want to have a li lifetime relationship with. Don't just go to anyone. Um, even if they can get you the watch, I think it's probably better to make sure you uh, buy that watch from the per from the the authorized dealer you intend to have a relationship with, even if you have to wait a little longer. Um, you know, I don't think they'll try to steer you to another watch that quickly. You know, you're coming in for your first watch, and if you're dead set on one of these OP41s, uh, they'll get it for you. So, um, the next watch is the Omega Silver Snoopy. Now, this one is already actually paid for. So, that one's coming solid 100% as well. So, these are two for sure watches I have coming in, 100%. So, that's exciting. Let me see here. We'll take a look at the Omega Snoopy again. So this one is called the 50th anniversary. That's right, I forgot. This is, after all, the 50th anniversary. And... Let's see if that comes up. All right. Um, as you all know, I have a custom strap sitting here waiting for this. So that tells you how excited I am about this watch already. So, I mean, this is two slam dunks. I'm, uh, you know, I'm making a mess all over myself over that Rolex OP41. And this will be mess number two right here with this Omega. I mean, I already got a custom strap made for the dang thing. So that tells you I'm really hot in this watch coming in. And that's really great too, because uh, it's, it's, it's exciting to get excited about the Omega brand. You know, it was a brand that I was always initially excited about in the beginning. Um, my friend Archie Luxury always, um, was excited about this brand, Man on the Moon. And, uh, he was always excited about this brand. And I even had the, uh, the, what do you call it? The Constellation, didn't I? I mean, I spent $19,000 on a Constellation, um, which I ultimately got rid of. Man on the moon. But I ended up getting a man on the moon. Vintage. Man on the fucking moon. That's right.
you know, the Snoopy one was one that I always regretted not getting. The, the last two. So... When this one was coming out... I figured, what the heck, man. Dive in, because if you don't get this watch after it comes out and you're not going to be able to get it you're going to regret not getting the Snoopy the third time they put it out I, I wasn't into watches the first time they put it out the second time they put it out I didn't really know about it wasn't really interested I'm not some kind of a Snoopy fan or anything at all um, but I've always been into space I've always been into space you know when I was when I was a kid, I wrote letters to NASA and things like that. You know, I always was into space, so that's really a cool element to the watch. And I'm very much into space still today. I watch and I'm into a lot of YouTube space channels, um, alien theory, and uh, we're going to be getting into a, a lot of astronomy, my son and I, because I just bought him a nice telescope. So this this is a great a great watch. The, and and doing the whole astronomy thing puts my ball watch back into play um, because it's a great night watch due to the tritium tubes, the ball watch that I have. So now I don't want to get rid of the ball watch. I mean, I pretty much don't want to get rid of a single watch that I have. Um, the only one that possibly would be on the chopping block is my vintage Omega Speedy since I'm getting this one and I don't really want to wear the vintage Speedy and uh, I reached a point where I said I don't want to have watches in my box that I don't wear like that steel bezel Daytona that I had uh, which I moved so you know the only watch that doesn't ever get worn anymore in my collection is the uh, vintage Omega Speedy so uh I kind of feel that one's probably ready to go. But this watch is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, as far as the blue goes, the blue bezel, um, you know, people like the blue dials, blue bezels, blue... I don't know if I have... I mean, I have a bluesy... I guess that's as blue as I get. I don't think I have any other watches that have any blue bezels or blue dials. Um, the Batman has a partial blue bezel, um, but it's not like I don't, I don't. I don't think I have a blue dial watch. So this is going to be as other than my bluesy. So uh, I don't think anybody out in the public exactly has this watch yet or if they do there are very very few people very few and far between I haven't really seen any public people post Instagram photos of this yet uh, sort of a I, I think I've seen a little bit but I'm not sure who those people are that have them The interesting thing about this watch is my prediction uh, as far as the value of this watch. This is a Bitcoin watch. This, and I'm calling this my Bitcoin watch too. <clears throat> because this is a moon watch. And uh, I'm going to have another custom strap made for it eventually. And it's going to be a Bitcoin moon strap with Bitcoins on it. So, for now, I think when this watch comes out, it's just going to be ridiculous. It's going to blow every other watch out of the water when it comes to hype and price. That's just, just my prediction. I mean, the watch is about $10,000. Um... Ten and a half thousand, I think, out the door with taxes and all. I I have no doubt it's gonna sell for twenty five thousand, same price as a Panda Daytona. 
um, but keep in mind that instead of paying 14 grand for it, you're paying 10 grand for it. So more premium. This is going to pack more premium punch than a Rolex Panda Daytona. That's that's my prediction. Yeah, that one fun. Yep. And uh, and it's a shame that I can't enjoy any premium from any of my watches because I'm not going to sell any of the dang things. So um, I guess it's just nice to know that the worth of what we value in our hobby, that as a whole, we uh, they're valued and they carry worth and value and retention value that that's just great so that you can know that you can put a lot of money into these things enjoy them wear them never sell them but just always know that as a backstop for your family i mean what's your family going to do with 50 watches when you when you uh meet your maker man come on i mean what are they going to do with them so it's 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 great that there's some liquidity available for these. It'll involve a little bit of work on someone's behalf. Phone calls, research, packing, shipping, following up on financial accounts to liquidate these things. Um, but I reckon that in most cases, to be honest, with the kind of collections that you all got, they will probably when that time comes god forbid uh they're going to be able to hand in your collection to christie's or something cuz it's going to be worth that much you know uh i imagine my chronometra blue one day will fetch a couple hundred thousand dollars at the least i have no doubt you know, one day when I'm good and gone, that chronometer blue, uh, Francois Paul Journal will be long gone. And uh, my kids will probably blow that at a Christie's auction for half a million bucks. Come on. A chronometer blue? I have no doubt. <clears throat> okay, next watch. Um... We didn't look at too many pictures of the. Uh... Oh, here's a real authentic looking picture of that Snoopy. Oh. It's showing the blue. That really is an authentic, clear shot. Some good lighting, right? So look at that blue. That really is like a. That's kind of like the Rolex Smurfy blue. A little darker. And, and let's look at that silver dial. Yeah. Yeah, that bezel really makes this watch pop. Hey, did you notice something else? It's a dot over 90 bezel. dot over 90 so that I mean that's kind of cool because I have two speed masters and both my speed masters are dot over 90s you know um, 50th anniversary year 2020 You know, I, I really might want to just keep that 1968 Speedmaster I got just for the the historical horological value. It's a 68 transitional. It's super rare. 
and when you can when you want to talk watches with someone uh, or even just look at them and enjoy your horological collection and think about it you can you can hold these two together and reflect on the left hand in your palm holding the 1968 and think about it then and holding this 2020 homage to the one you're holding on the left right pretty cool too bad they don't give you um, a 1039 homage bracelet with this watch they really would have knocked it out of the park if they gave you the flat end link bracelet with this watch don't you think here I do think they made uh, a modern flat and link bracelet. So one of the first things I'll... Uh, look, I got this strap and the custom strap to enjoy. But I, I do know that in some point in the future, I'm going to ask them if there is a uh, flat link modern... Oh my, there, I, I seen it. On one of their some of their some of their watches, they have a flat link bracelet that looks just like the old 1039. So, I want that bracelet on this watch. Wouldn't this watch look amazing on a full bracelet? Flat link end links. Man on the moon. What's the next watch on the... So that's a for sure... So there's two slam dunks. I mean, I just feel they're like slam dunkers. <coughs> two slam dunks there, right? And those two are coming for sure. I know, I know the AD is not going to stiff me out of the OP41. Look, man, they're stiffing me on the on the other ones, but the OP41, I'm getting that damn thing. The Sudoopy, I'm getting. Now the AP Royal Oak, that's the next one, the one five five zero zero, and. Uh, there's a wonderful guy that I know that's helping me to get that. And uh, God bless him. Hopefully uh, it comes through sometime. It doesn't matter when, to be honest. That's a watch that if I was to go to an any AD and say, hey, I want a Royal Oak. And they tell me five year wait, six year wait. I'd be like, sure. How much deposit do I need to put down? Just like the five, the the Aquanaut, just like the Patek Philippe Aquanaut, I'm down to put a deposit on it. I just can't get my foot in the door at AP. I tried one time at the Beverly Hills Boutique. I mean, I didn't really try. I called by phone, so you know how that is gonna go. So I never went there. I never pressed them. I never really tried, but I already know it, 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 it wouldn't go. It probably wouldn't fare well, would it? So when I did call, they told me you have to at least own something on the books with AP 
for us to even talk to you. The language of Royal Oak. That's exactly what she told me. So. So any time this watch comes in would be a, a grateful event. Put it that way. Um, so this is another one. This is for sure, for sure. Don't know if I'm going to get it for sure. It's likely. But this is in the sense that it's a for sure spend. I'm definitely spending the money on this if the phone call comes. 100%. So that's a, that's an actually that's a that's a that's a large allocation right there. You know, that's not an inexpensive watch. That's somewhere around twenty two, twenty three thousand dollars. So, and and we're looking at the full stainless steel. Any color dial, we don't we don't care. Any color dial. I don't even have a preference. Um, maybe to say the silver. But we've, we've talked about that and and flip-flopped on the dial color so many times that the bottom line is, you know, let AP choose the dang dial color for me, which is what's going to happen anyway. So why fret over it? You're going to be forced to be happy with whatever dial color comes to play anyway. Um, so, so that's definitely missing from my collection is an AP, definitely. Um... So that one is a uh, yeah, okay. Then the the five one six seven, the next watch, the paddock. Um, I think I think that one's just I'm just lost when it comes to that aquanaut, not knowing when that's gonna when that is gonna come. I mean, I've been on a wait list for that watch for three years and one month. And four days. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with that one. Maybe one day I'll just get a call. I mean, if I get the call, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it. I'm going to take it. Um, having a Patek Philippe Sports Steel rubber strap... Um, although I'm getting it with the steel bracelet and I'll have to order this, the rubber strap and deploy it later and I'd get that months later. So I'll initially have it with a steel bracelet only. Uh, just having um, a sports paddock would be just phenomenal. So... That also is a for sure watch to be on my list and to remain on my list. It's uh, That one is probably the most questionable watch of the one listed up here as to the likeliness of whether I'm going to actually get it in my hands or not. Um, because I think everything else is pretty much for certain that I'll have them by the means that I'm currently trying to acquire them. I think I think I think Bud's going to really be able to help me get the Royal Oak without a doubt, probably sooner than I think. And uh there is no other watch up here that's questionable, just this 5167, this Aquanaut. Um I mean, I've been waiting 3 years. Um I mean, I'm on the list. I had a deposit. They refunded my deposit. Um, will I get it in 2021? Or will I get it three years from today? I don't know. I'm never taking myself off the list, so I really don't know. 
or will I ever not get it at all? <clears throat> so, let's see what, uh, let me pull up the dang Aquanaut. Let's take a look at the Aquanaut for a moment. References. Paddock five one six seven. I didn't mean to do that. Okay. Yeah, that's a lovely watch. Very lovely. I, I probably made a mistake ordering it in the bracelet. It was probably extra money not needed to be spent. Especially when you know that you're probably going to keep the watch. Then you're, you've sunk money into that extra bracelet setup without needing the. So. Maybe. Uh, maybe I should, when I get the watch, take the bracelet immediately off. Order the other. The rubber and the deployant. And. Um, sell the bracelet set up unworn untouched maybe I can make uh, 500 bucks on it for the hassle you know but this definitely is another watch that I want uh, all, all of these are on the list for sure I've I don't think I'm second guessing any of these choices I've got my watch list down pat, down tight. I mean, that's a lot of watches right there, too, that I've given a lot of thought to. That's a lot of freaking watches and a lot of dough. That list right here. So. So let's see. Let's, let's uh, stop that picture there. Uh. So, we'll see. Then then we've got the Havana, the FP Shorn. Let's see here. Find a picture of that one. This is, uh, the picture I used for my avatar that I found. That's a pretty good shot of it. Really, really good shot of it right here. Really shows, highlights the beauty of this watch.
so you know when you look at this list of watches I'm not chasing hard to get watches I mean the Rolex OP41 is it is what it is it's a new release but it's not like it's a hard to get new release it's somewhat harder to get but it it ain't a sub it isn't one of the ones people really are chasing chasing right it's just an OP the silver Snoopy I think anybody could have gotten that um, if you didn't wait to the last minute you know but otherwise anybody could have gotten it and, and there is a like watch to that that Ed White even though it costs 50% more than the Snoopy that Ed White 321 is the better watch than the Snoopy watch. I just, I didn't want to spend 50% more to get it. You know, I've got a lot on the table right here, so I got to shave a little bit, you know? And, uh, and you know, part of me really did want the Snoopy anyway. <clears throat> so, uh, getting what I want for 50% less than the Ed White, um, it, it's kind of a win-win for me. Uh, but I don't think this, that, that silver Snoopy was all that too hard to get, you know, just as long as you didn't wait till the last, last minute. Um, the Royal Oak, definitely hard to get. Uh, am I chasing that? I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't like that watch at first and it grew on me. And I guess I've been wanting it for at least a couple of years now. For sure, a couple of years at least. Um, especially since when Vince came... Uh, Victor, sorry. When Victor came on board here and uh, really got Bud and I into AP. As you can see, uh, he got Bud into AP hardcore. And Bud's never left AP after that. So um, I haven't gotten my I haven't gotten my AP bug fixed yet. After all of that hype, you know. So I, I I think I really do need an AP Royal Oak in my box, without a doubt. I do for certain. So I'm uh, definitely not hype chasing on that one. That one's a genuine desire to want that. Um. The 5167, I mean, I put a deposit on that three more than three years ago. There wasn't any hype on that watch three years ago. It was just uh, just getting hard to get. It, I was supposed to just get that in a couple of years, like no problem. The watch wasn't, it was only going for like $3,000 over list. It wasn't going for anything more. Um, I had the choice between the 5711 or the or the 5167. Instead of the Nautilus, I chose the Aquanaut. So I was in a boutique and had a choice of what to get. So I definitely wasn't hype chasing there. I was in there willing to spend my money on a paddock. Um, the next one's that Havana Sovereign here that we got on the screen. Uh, absolutely no hype chasing here. You can go and buy this one tomorrow from any FP Jordan boutique. So they just got to make it for you. Um, but you can buy it secondhand for virtually the same price. So. That watch on the screen right now is just going to feel like... I've reached a whole nother level in uh, my watch game. That That's going to take my watch game to the highest level right here. I mean, uh, for a simple time only power reserve watch. I mean, this watch has some game. And I don't have any platinum watches. So this is going to be a great... A great... Fill for the platinum category. 
it's different. It's definitely different. It adds to the variation. It adds to a variety in my collection. That brown clay dial it has um, is definitely different than any of my Rolex dials. Um, again, it doesn't have a date. No date window. Look, if I'm going to spend this money on a watch, I want to wear the watch. I don't want to hate on the date window. So it was... Um, I think it was essential to me that it didn't have a date window on this particular watch. Because you can get it with a date window. It's six o'clock. And then the last watch, uh, and, and so this watch is coming 100% for certain as well. So, I mean, there's one, two, three watches on this list uh, four that are for sure, three that are for sure coming in 2021. And that Rolex is coming in January. The Silver Snoopy, he told me hopefully the first quarter of 2021. So he wasn't over promising. Uh, but it's definitely coming sometime in 2021, even if first quarter was a lie. Uh, the Havana is coming for sure, probably uh, springtime. And uh, the last watch on the list is the Chronometra Blue. Which um, I think I have about five years left to wait for that one. Let's see if I could pull this watch up. So, five year wait for this one. And as long as they don't kill production on this watch, in the next five years, I'll be getting this watch. For sure, I'll be getting this watch. So, I think when this, this watch could very well be my holy grail to end all collecting for me when this watch comes in. And, and I'm and you know what? And I'm lucky to have I'm lucky to have uh, gone in and put an application in for this piece and get accepted on the list for it. I mean I got right in and showed interest in it right before the craziness over this watch. You know, I just, I, I got lucky I jumped on the board for this watch before. P put it this way, it's kind of like Bitcoin. And I got in not as early as the first people, but I got in sooner than most. And you can't get on the list for this watch anymore. So I did get lucky. This is definitely my holy grail of all watches when it when it this truly is my holy grail of all watches. To have had to put in an application piece in for it. And uh it's gonna be fully made by hand. It's being made right now for me as we speak. Somebody's working on this watch and they know my name. You know? That's pretty cool. Uh, that's the Havana Sovereign is, 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 is that way. And this will be the same when this piece is made as well. 
you know? They know exactly who this piece is going to. Why F.P. Jordan is the pinnacle of independent watchmaking. Who wrote this? Boss Hunting. Published July 2020 by Jack Gilland. I've always felt the best way to gauge the depth of a watch lover's enthusiasm is by their knowledge of independent watch manufacturers. Everyone knows Rolex. A lot of people know Patek Philippe. Not many people know MB&F. It takes a special kind of passion to explore the corners of the known watch universe, but I opine that this is where the magic truly happens. Let's see what this guy has to say. Independent watchmakers, many non-Swiss, are not subject to the same restrictions that more mainstream manufacturers are. Their limitless passion and pursuit of perfection is their only motivator, evident in the very founding of a new watch company, which in itself is no mean feat. In this lesser-known market of low-volume watchmaking, there are many key players. MBNF, Laurent Ferrier, and De Bethune are just some of the amazingly talented creators in this segment. That being said, I feel there is one standout independent watchmaker, F.P. Journe. Francois-Paul Journe founded his company in 1999, making it a swaddled infant when compared to the companies it plays alongside. Despite this, the brand has cultivated itself a reputation of desirability, quality, and craftsmanship. They will go out of their way to fix problems that are sometimes insignificant, and more often aren't really problems at all. One example of this is Jorn's take on the tourbillon. I won't bore you with the mechanical jargon, but essentially a tourbillon is a complication designed to offset the effects of gravity on timekeeping in a pocket watch. Now this works in a pocket watch because it would sit in the vest or a shirt pocket vertically, and the turbion was designed to work as such. When applied to a wristwatch, however, the turbion was not effective as the watch spends most of its life horizontally. Naturally, F. P. Jorn decided to rotate the turbion to sit vertically in the movement to ensure its effectiveness. The best part, gravity doesn't have an impact on wristwatches. This wasn't a problem that Jorn fixed. It was an inadequacy in other turbion watches that he refused to adopt in his own. Complication for the sake of complication, but Jorn makes sure it's functional. Every one of his in-house calibers is manufactured from 18 karat rose gold, with particular attention paid to finishing and aesthetics. F.P. Jorn watches are strictly classical, yet inexplicably their own, with teardrop hands and a distinctive yet ubiquitous dial font. They truly have mastered the art of subtle design. My absolute favorite offering from Jorn is the Chronometra Blue. Firstly, I would sell my body for a well-executed blue dial watch. There is just something about the combination of blue dial and white metal, in this case tantalium, that works for me. Teamed with a full set of white brigadesque numerals and their signature teardrop hands, it is truly a masterclass of watch aesthetics. These watches are seen selling for around double their list price, which would normally catapult me into a fit of rage. However, in this instance, it does not. There is a manufacturer that produces under 1,000 pieces per year, a genuine low volume product. I feel this speaks volumes of their products, the company who makes them and the man who founded it. People would rather have a single time only FP Jorn than a Patek Philippe Calatrava and a Steel Sports Rolex at resale. This makes me irreversibly happy, a micro-brand changing less than they could, and letting their work cement their brand value. Bravo, F.P. Jorn, we would certainly be keeping an eye on you. A very cool article. I agree, wholeheartedly. As a matter of fact, I'm getting two time-only watches from them, just like the guy said in this article. Interesting. And this isn't even a watch magazine, is it? Boss hunting.
Yeah. I hope they don't come within weeks of each other either. It's all good to be overwhelmed by them. That, that wouldn't be such a bad thing. I'll tell you what, twenty the year 2021, as far as watches go, is going to be like Merry Christmas for me all year long, to be honest. Are there any you would have second thoughts about if you got the phone call today? No way, right? This entire list is cement and stone. The only thing I'd have problems with is scrambling to figure out where I'm going to get the funds from. To be quite honest, that's going to be my biggest issue. So the longer these all take, the better. I need Bitcoin to keep going up. <laughs> so leave these watches on the wait list for me, please. Look, the Snoopy's already paid for, so send that fucker over. The yellow dial OP, man, that's 6000 6500 bucks, man. Bring that all day long. <laughs> You're right. You know? Look, the Royal Oak in the paddock, I've been chasing those for two years, three years. So bring those on too, man. I'm, I'm ready to get one of those, one of those two, whichever one comes. So, no, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty set with these, man. I think I'm pretty set with these. And and the thing is, is that I've been waiting long enough for all of these to know that I'm sure about these decisions. The, the only way I wouldn't want them is if it comes to me and I try it on and I say, oh man, I really don't like it. Because I've never... Oops, oops, sorry. Shit. I've, I've never... Um, Try to single a single one of these. I've never tried a single one of these on my wrist. So So yeah. Do you guys have a list like this? Do you have your list? I always have my list. I've always had my watch list. You know, what I want, what I'm, what I, you know, what's in the works. Do you have your watch list? You know, I guess going on your question, Rav, oh, this question here, are there any, I'd have second thoughts if I got the phone call today. I guess it, it could depend on if I have the FP Jorn Havana. Maybe the one would be, gosh, would I question the paddock, Aquanaut, if they called me? Because you got to figure, I'm gonna I'm gonna drop 40 G's on that FP Jorn. 40 G's on the FP Jorn. If the if the Aquanaut if, if the if the if if I get the call for the Audemars Piguet, I'm getting that no matter what, no matter what. The Paddock Aquanaut, I don't feel exactly the same about that as compared to the Royal Oak. So, it, it's possible. It's possible. I mean, it, it, I buy a Havana, I get a call for a Royal Oak, and I get the Royal Oak, and then I get a call for a Aquanaut four weeks later, eight weeks later. That could kill the deal, Roth. That could kill the deal. I'm not so sure if I'm ready to lay out. I'm not so for sure if I want to lay out 40, 65, 
you know, 90 grand in such a short period like that. So that, that's a possibility. You're right. There is a possibility. The only, the only watch that would get shot in the foot in a situation like that would be the Aquanaut. The Aquanaut, that's the watch that would get shot in the foot. The Aquanaut, baby! <laughs> that's the watch that would get shot in the foot. <laughs> I'm turning into a Bitcoin. <laughs> Yeah, it's freezing in my garage. In my garage. It's cold. Well, actually, I'm hot. Because I got a heater at my feet. But, yeah, that's the only thing that'll kill the deal, Rav. Is if it comes in too quick. If they come in too hard and too heavy, man, on me. And if I'm not ready with my ammo. You know what I mean? I could not be ready with my ammo, man. I'm fully invested. I'm out of gunpowder. So. What's going to happen? Man, we ended up talking about watches for an hour and 18 minutes. So we didn't even talk about anything else. Let me see here. Let me see here. Everybody enjoy their Christmas. Everybody enjoy all the family, the family arguments and the and the craziness that went on. Or did you not have any of that this Christmas? We didn't have any of that this Christmas. It went okay. So we're just going to change the top the name of this broadcast to Luxury Watches. Um, what Rich Buddy has on order. I think that's what we talked about. So we'll change the name to more accurately fit the stream. <clears throat> that's right. Fucking hell! A dozen pieces of fucking shit. That's what I got on my. That's what I got on my order. My order list. Half a dozen pieces of fucking shit. <laughs> yeah. Right, Roth. It's possible, but more likely, that the FP OP Snoopy will arrive in the first quarter, like you're expecting. Yes, for sure, the OP and the Snoopy, and and the FP Jorn. Yeah, I think those are the three that are going to be coming right away. And the, and then, I mean, it's likely. Really, Buds assured me like he thought it would be coming by Christmas. So. He thought for sure, because he's got a lot of stuff from that person. So he thought, that tells you how hard that Royal Oak is really hard to get. Because if Bud hasn't been able to get it yet, that tells you how hard that watch is truly hard to get. If that man hasn't been able to get it yet. Because he's been dropping digis at that dealer. Alright? So, you know... Um, you know, 
I really, really feel I should really understand and know and expect for that AP to come in the first quarter as well. So that's heavy hitting right there, man. Really, that's a lot of dough outlaid. Holy smokes, you know? So, I'm pretty sure that AP... There's a chance... There's a good chance that AP comes in before the FP Jorn, as a matter of fact. Honestly, the OP and the Snoopy aren't even really considerations in pricing. The Snoopy's paid for, the OP's whatever. That'll just go on dealer credit it's the AP and the FP Jordan that cost a lot of dough oh the chat goes very slow through here that just popped up on my screen and that just popped up on my screen just right now Did you guys get COVID? Did you clam? Shit, dude, I hope you guys are okay. We've stayed cleared of it. Everybody in my family and everybody stayed cleared of it so far. Um, all right, I think that ends the watch segment anyway. I think we've talked. That was a good hour and 20 minutes on watches. I'm going to skip to the talking about guns. And I'm just going to look at Bitcoin real quick. Because I haven't even looked at it since I got up at 3 a.m. Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to get rid of the, that comment banner. Did it rain? Oh wow, it's raining. Get out of here. Is my boy's bike covered? Hold on. Oh, hold on a second. I gotta make sure my boy's bike's covered.
man, that's why I try to only buy myself nice shit. Because I, I take care of my stuff. He left his bike in the rain, his brand new bicycle that he just got for Christmas. Make sure when you buy stuff for your family, you buy them stuff that's expendable. Cheap shit. That'll go in the garbage and you won't feel bad about it. Don't spend good Rolex money on shit you know is going to go in the garbage. He left his brand new mongoose out in the rain. Well, it's the last time he's going to get a brand new mongoose, right? Oh, shit. So you guys are all sick from it. Do you guys have just mild symptoms or? Hopefully so. Yeah, it was mooning yesterday. So now your whole school and stuff is probably all under quarantine, right? They do that here. When somebody finds out they got it, they quarantine, not the whole school, but the kids from the whole class and stuff have to stay home. It's happened a couple of times. 27227, that looks pretty good for Bitcoin. That's actually really good, right? Where have we been? Um, we got as high as a thousand points higher, 900 points higher. We made a high. That was yesterday, huh? Yesterday, the day before yesterday. So we'll get back up there. We'll get back up to 28. And, uh... So you see, there's these little corrections. These little... These little... Bare wedges. These little down, these little wedges here, you see what it does? These little wedges. So it comes down and then goes up. And, and, and the, 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 the little tiny corrections that have been a thousand, two thousand points, that's what these little wedges are right here. They look small, but they're pretty big, actually. These are... These are 1,000 point, 2,000 point swings. Uh, these are 2,000 point swings. So these corrections here, you can see them. Goes into a symmetrical bare wedge, and then it breaks out. Then does the same thing, and then breaks out. 
here's three of them. Three of them all along the same level, to be quite honest. This is all at the same level, you see that? I guess that's a trader's dream right there. That could give you... If we do the same thing here now at 27, maybe we're going to have three of these play out at this level up here. So maybe maybe someone who sold at this top of this wedge is going to be able to rebuy at the bottom of this wedge. You know, right now, or at 26... They, this wedge went down at 26-something. They should have rebought. And now, now, now they're going to ride this up to the top of the next wedge. That could happen here somewhere. So, I mean, there's, 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 a, there's a possibility this could happen. And you could play out three different mini cycles here of these little three symmetrical bear wedges to make profits on. That's a good scenario. Um, you're always taking the risk that that it breaks up and doesn't when you're out of it. That's always a possibility. So you have to be aware of of that. That that's the risk. I feel that's more risky than any downside risk. The risk of missing out of a uh, of a very bullish candle when you're sitting out of the game in the middle of your trades. I think that's the risk, you know, you have to decide if you want to take or not. I was thinking we would hit 30,000 by midday, by 1 p.m. today. I don't know. Is that possible? It doesn't seem as likely as it did before. When we were up here at 28, it seemed more likely to me. But I don't know. It, to be honest, it could. It still could. But I think it's more likely that we're going to maybe follow up this line here and we might see that on New Year's on the 30th or the 31st so two to three days we'll see 30,000 if we continue up this trend line here and bounce this way maybe that's what we'll do Or are we going to see a similar pattern what we saw here at this level? Are we going to see two or three symmetrical wedges going along this horizontal line right here? And are we going to see that play out? How long did this play out for? 12, 12 17 to 12, 24. So this was a one-week cycle. These three wedges played out over a one-week cycle. Could we see two more wedges over um, the next 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 1, 2, through the, through this, through the second, through the second, let me, let me, through the second, where's the second on here? Here's the second. So if I draw a line right here, are we going to see two more of these triangle play out and then break up? Okay, hey, that's a that's a likely scenario here. You know? I I think there's two scenarios here that we'll see then. Either either we break up up, up along this trend line, 30,000 target. 
by New Year's Eve, right? Let's say we want to move this target. To the top of this trend line right here and so let's say we want a 30,000 target right around here now and that's New Year's Eve New Year's Day New Year's Eve or the day before right two to three days from now <clears throat> maybe we go that way or or maybe we're gonna see you know a triangle play out right here and another triangle play out right here maybe we'll see two triangles two more triangles play out where we go up down up down you know with a variance of like 1500 2000 points of this uh, this y-axis here what do you think that does that sound fair that these would be the two scenarios that could possibly play out right now um, Um, continue to break out because my, my my theory for continue to breaking out to see 30,000 you know and then higher as we go forward is that institutionals come into the office Monday, Tuesday Grayscale being one of the biggest and they're buying into Bitcoin. So that's my theory of us building up, you know, my Monday target, right? Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, just simply an increase in market cap. You know, we're basically sitting on half a trillion dollars. For the first time, Bitcoin hit half a trillion dollars market cap. $500 billion is in Bitcoin worldwide 500 billion dollars half a trillion market cap that's a phenomenal uh, feat that's a milestone actually so that that's very significant so right now we're bouncing all around the uh, half a trillion dollar market cap imagine that so to put that in perspective gold has a 10 million dollar market cap there's 10 10 trillion I'm sorry there's 10 trillion dollars in gold okay 10 trillion dollars in gold and uh, there's only half a trillion dollars now in Bitcoin I mean you can easily assume you're gonna see 1 trillion dollars in Bitcoin can't you easily just assume that just a natural assumption would be that you're going to see one trillion dollars in Bitcoin, which is double the market cap currently. Double the market cap, double the price. You can, I think, you can safely assume the lowest this asset should be worth in a in a in a in a in a, in a total bear market is fifty thousand bucks. Come on, you know. One trillion market cap, and I'm I'm also um, basing that on looking at the stock to flow model, which shows that in the uh, next market cycle coming up here in 2021, we should see the low end of the spectrum being at fifty thousand. That we should never see below fifty thousand again. So, so a year from now, whenever we see market crashes, we theoretically shouldn't fall below 50,000 ever in the future. So. It's 
So I, I think you're going to see these similar patterns going forward. Institutional buying pushing us up. And then little consolidation triangles, you know, little consolidations. And then institutional money pushing us up and then little short consolidations you see and then at some point you're going to get retail buyers which are people like you and me retail buyers haven't bought into this market just yet so um retail buyers haven't just bought in just yet The entire class got it. Ouch. Well, that's good. Thank God. Hey, what up, bud? Oh, wow. Congratulations. Wow. No way. Wow. That's crazy. Congratulations, buddy. Wow. What a feeling. I'm so far away from that day. My oldest kid is 10 years old. Hell, I might never I might not ever see my grandkids, bro. So you're very lucky, dude. You're very lucky. That's the one thing when you have kids when you're older, you um you you at one t point you think about that that you wish you had them younger cuz you want to you want to know that you want to ensure that you're going to see your grandkids. Yeah. That's good, man. Congratulations, man. That's awesome, dude. Let me know, man. Shoot me a text. Let me know how, uh... Let me know if, if it was a boy or a girl, bro. Shoot me a text later. gentlemen i think i'm gonna uh, cut the stream we took a little look at everything talked about watches and a uh, little market wrap i think the only thing i want to take a quick peek at before i cut it is it looks like the stock market's gonna be up a hundred or so points wow with apple just taking a huge leap three bucks get out of here Three dollar gain. I got a thousand shares, boys. We're up three bucks. That means I'm up three thousand dollars. You see, Super Neutron, I got in just in time, baby. I got in just in time, baby. Yo, yo. <laughs> and the market's not even open yet, fuckers. Oh, it just opened 15 minutes ago, and we're up three bucks. Shit. I'll tell you which one's losing me money, though. I'm losing money on that Canu car company one that I bought. That's okay. That's okay. We'll figure it out. Man, that's great, though. Apple. That's where all my money's at. Apple. What about Disney? What's good old Disney doing? Disney's up three bucks as well. Wow. 177. Good lord. It looks like it's going to be a big green day on Wall Street today. So Merry Christmas to everybody. The market's up 185 points. We're over 30,000. Tesla is almost $700. You know, these, these cryptocurrencies have gone nuts, bazonkers. Look at Litecoin, 135 bucks. Loudmouth Tim bought that at $45. And Ethereum, I bought Ethereum just a few days ago 
for five hundred and seventy-eight bucks, and it's up. It's seven hundred and thirty-two dollars. That's the only crypto other currency that I got is Ethereum. I only got three and a half shares of it, so it ain't like I. But hey, three and a half shares. It is what it is, man. All right. New Year's Eve, man. I got to figure out what we're going to do for New Year's Eve. I'm hoping that I'm going to have a Bitcoin party. New Year's Eve Bitcoin party. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, take it easy. Have a great day.